Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Okay, how's everybody been doing? Good? And if you notice, I said welcome back. That pun was intended because we're on to our back workout this time, okay? As we said, one body part a day, you know, a little bit of abs, a little bit of cardio. We put an ab routine up there, but he seems to like it so far. I'm gonna add some additional ab exercises coming up in the next few days. Um, I'm also gonna show you some at-home cardio, uh, like quick hit cardio stuff, uh, jumping jacks and some burpees and jump squats, things that are easy to do. Um, and again, the skill level, how many you do, it all depends on where you're at physically and where you wanna go. So um, anyway, this is a program that's super simple, as we keep saying, and it's all about the individual. And that's what truly, I think, will allow people to achieve results, is that it's all based on you. And we're all individuals. Even though we're a lot alike in a lot of ways, we all have individual bodies and they respond differently in different ways. So that's why we go to failure every set. That's those things that we talk about. Anyway, we're on to back today. All right, so we're gonna do as we do. Seven different exercises, right? Okay, or, or I like to call them rounds. Um, but, and then we're gonna go um, two rounds per exercise, total of 14 sets, try to go to failure every single time. Uh, back is a big muscle, represents a lot of our body, a lot of different parts of back. There's like the lats, um, there's the inside outside muscles, fast twitch, slow twitch, all that stuff which they try to confuse you with in all these fancy and funky workout videos. Um, but today I'm just gonna show you some simple moves. It's gonna be effective. And um, you know, weights up to you as long as we go to failure every time. All right, everybody ready? Back, welcome back to the 2.25 a.m. club, which by the way, in case you haven't noticed, isn't necessarily at 2.25 a.m. <laughs> All right, first exercise, pull-ups. We're gonna go wide grip pull-ups. Now again, I haven't asked you guys to get anything, okay? Because for me, it's whatever weights we got laying around, whatever weights we need. Get them as you can. I know financially things are tough for everybody right now, so just get what you can. I would um, implore you to try to get some sort of a pull-up bar, okay? Um, they aren't that expensive. You can go on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Get one that works in your door frame. You can get one like I got. This is a pretty good thing. This is actually not expensive either. It's like I think it's like 100 bucks, which is not cheap, but not expensive. Um, but you can do a lot of different things on this. Some of our ab workouts later I'm going to use for this. Dips when we go to triceps as an advanced movement we can use on this. Today, this comes with a pull-up bar that's already attached. So instead of like the door jam one, this one comes up here. Now, for people that can't do pull-ups, what I would suggest is put your push-up bars underneath, okay? You put them underneath, or you can put an ottoman or a chair, which will help you do pull-up assists. I don't need those, but for the people that do, use them because it's all about how your body responds, okay? So the person that's weak and needs the push-up assistance their pull-up is gonna affect them and actually allow them to grow just as much muscle as the person that doesn't need them, right? Because it's all about where we are individually as people. So anyway, we're gonna start with uh, wide grip pull-ups and we're gonna go to failure. And um, this is sort of a double up move. I'm gonna show you, okay? So we're gonna go with and then we're gonna go girth, I like to call it, right? With this way and with this way. Round out that back, okay? Start with wide grip pull-ups. Get up here to such. If you want, like step up on whatever you're using for your assist, and then the people that don't need the assist, they take their legs off, bend them in that all too familiar position, like this, and then you pull up. Keep your head up, okay? Don't put your head down like this. It strains the muscle in the back and the neck too much. Head up, try to bring that pull up chin to the bar, okay? So like this, here we, here we go. One, and I like to whip through them. You don't have to go slow. Two, three, right? <sighs> Breathe through it, good, four, good. Five, good. Six, good. Seven, good. Eight, good. Nine, good. Ten. Really squeeze with those lats, right? Eleven, look at this, and twelve, okay? So I did twelve. Could I do more? Maybe, but that felt good for me. Twelve is good, okay? Especially because we're doubling up on the movement. We just did a wide grip. Now we're going to do a classic bent over row. We're going to go right into it because we're doing with and we're doing with. I like to call this girth, right? Round out the back, there's several different body parts, sorry, several different muscle groups in the back. We don't have to get into all the technical mumbo jumbo, but trust me, this will work. So, we're right in. Now, using your chair, if you have a workout bench, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You can use your ottoman or chair, box, or whatever you need. Okay, I wanna put one leg behind you. Classic bent over row. I'm not gonna over talk too much. People that know me say, Joe, you talk too much. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna say, grab whatever weight works for you. I have a 50 pound. That works for me, but honestly, 20, 25, 30, whatever you're on, I want you to go to failure. Single arm, bent over rows, right out of your wide grip pull-up, okay? So as such, 
Start in front of you, bring it back like this. Boom, okay? Try to take the arm out of it. Don't squeeze the bicep. Keep the grip nice, but not too tight. It'll bring the tension down into the hand, okay? So you almost like want it to just kind of sit in the palm of your hand like this. Just sit in the palm of your hand, okay? Don't grip it too tight, because then that puts all the strain into your bicep and your forearm. You want to keep it on this lat right here, okay? And you want to kind of go out and up, not straight down and up. That's fine, but I like going out and bring it up and look back like this, okay? Thanks. Right? Eight. Come on. Breathe through it. Ten. And okay. That was a fail for me to eleven. Go to the other side. And you do the exact same thing. So, other side as such. Hand on the bench, whatever you're using for stabilize. Keep your back slightly arched, your stomach, squeeze that for core. Pick the weight up. And as you'll see now, we're gonna go forward like this and back like this, okay? Pull right from here. Almost keep this limp, except for the fact that you gotta hold the weight, okay? So look, it's just sitting. I'm sort of cradling it in my palm, all right? Forward, up. Forward, up, forward, back, forward, back. See how that works? All right, back. Bend over row, everybody. Go to failure, okay? Eight, nine, here we go. Ten. That's your first round. Wide grip pull up, single arm bent over row. To failure. Get it. How's everybody feeling? Good? Wide grip pull up into the single arm bent over row. All right, we're back into it. If you take a little break, get a little breather, rest up. Two rounds of those, right? So back to back, two rounds to failure. All right, now we're on exercise two. So this one is another pull up. We're gonna go reverse grip. Now that also uses a little bit of bicep, but again, there's a way to take a lot of the bicep out of it by not squeezing so much. Don't bring the tension down into the hands. Almost keep the hands like grips but not gripping. And there's a difference between allowing it to hold you and squeezing and bringing all the tension, which allows you to use bicep when you're doing pull-up, which is fine as a secondary muscle, but we wanna to try to take as much tension out of the bicep as possible and keep it into the lat, okay? So we're mixing it up. It's a different part of the back, but we're gonna do reverse grip pull-ups into a reverse grip single arm pull, okay? I'm gonna show you how that works. But here we go. Again, if you need your pull-up assistance, use it, stand up on whatever you got, your chair, your item, in your box. This one we started wide, okay? Now we're now I want you to go sort of like shoulder length, all right? So we're gonna go about here, see? Lines up kind of with my shoulder, all right? And again, to failure. So as many as you can, as many as you can do. Because we're doing um, basically six sets of pull-ups to failure, you know, you're gonna be able to, I don't know how many you can do. I like to, I don't like to start jerking my whole body around and I like to keep the form really good. So for me, it's not so much about numbers as long as it's the failure. I don't care if you get six or four, eight, 10. You know, I usually do between 12 and 15 if I do them right. Um, I can whip out 30 if I do them wrong, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to do it right, right? So that's effective. Okay, anyway, reverse grip, pull up as such. Here we go, get it on. And again, if you need to hop up, you can use your pull up bars, your push up bars, whatever you got like this, and you could push up and go down, push up and go down as your pull up assist, okay? To failure. Here we go. Everybody feeling good? Use it. One. All right, two. Okay, see? I don't like to go past it. Because the minute you go past it, you're going to hurt yourself by like all this gyrating around. You know how people are doing that? They're picking up weights and using everything other than actually what they're trying to work out. Super ineffective and can lead to injury, especially when you're at home working out. And you don't have a trainer there. You're you know, paying somebody to spot your every move, which who has that? One of one percent. That's not us. Anyway, okay. So you're going from the reverse grip pull-up, and I'm going into a reverse grip uh, low lat pull, okay? Regardless, here's how it works. You know how when we were in the bent over row, we had our, we had our legs staggered? This one, we're going to almost be in a crouch position, okay? We're going to bend over like this. Uh, okay. Bend, bend over as such, and then you're going to pick up your weight. Again, I like to use the 50 pounds, but... Whatever works for you, whatever you got at the house, whatever is effective. 20, 15, 30, whatever works for you, just go to failure. This is a reverse grip. So you put the weight like this way, reverse palm. And the movement is very similar to the 
bent over row, you're gonna kinda go a little forward and come back. A little forward and come back. It's not a straight up movement. It's out and up, out and up like this, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate each arm super quick. I'm not gonna go to failure just because why do you wanna watch me do it when you can get to it? But anyway, this is how we're gonna do it. All right, so we're right out of our reverse grip pull-up into our single arm reverse grip row. Here we go. Up, like this. Up, like this. Up, like this, out. And up. Right, breathe through it, exit that back arch. Oh, like this. And bring it back, right? Back, right? And back, okay. Probably could have done two more, but that would have been failure, as I'm just trying to get through this for you guys. Anyway, you do the exact same thing on the other side, okay? So you use what you need what you need to use, put it on your bench, right? Okay, we'll just use this for now. Go like this, and you go up and out, right? Up and out, right? Up, see how it works? Up, okay? Up, and up, like this. Pull it right from here, pull it from here. Almost like we said, keep that, keep that hand sort of loose. It's just kind of cradling the weight, and really, really, really put all the energy in that lat muscle, okay? Reverse grip pull up into reverse grip single arm bent over roll. Get it! All right, everybody, how are we doing? We feeling good? On to our third exercise, okay? Two of these, again, another back to back. Back is a brutal exercise, okay? It takes up a big portion of our body and we're actually using a lot of different other muscles too, especially all these rows and stuff. As I'm telling you, you keep that that core squeeze and you breathe through it, you're bending over, you're actually using a bunch of core muscles, which are those muscles that keep us safe, right? When we're going to pick up something or, oh no, gotta pick up a box or something that drops on the floor and you go up and you're like, ah, what happened? It's weak core muscles, so we're gonna strengthen all those and we do it sort of in a very secretive way um, by just uh, squeezing and utilizing those muscles as we do a lot of these at-home workouts. So anyway, we're on to round three. Um, last um, pull-up for the back workout, thank God, because they're a pain in the ass. Um, we're gonna do a close grip pull-up. This is a close grip pull-up, and we're gonna go into a uh, into a uh, an upper row, okay? So we've worked middle back, right, with the bent over row. We worked lower back, right, with the low bent over pull, which is the last one that we did. This time we're working the upper back. So we're getting all three parts of that back, right, to give it nice symmetry, round it off, use all those little muscles so that when you're standing there, people are like, man, you just look really fit, you know? Because remember, it's about health and fitness. We're not, uh, certainly not me. I'm not trying to be the bodybuilder guy here. I'm on no supplements, taking no vitamins uh, other than just, you know, normal B12 or what you take, you know, vitamin D3, a little bit of that here and there, but no supplements to get bigger. I like being the size my body's supposed to be by using a lot of my own body weight and lightweight at home, going to failure every time. It's about life. It's about being healthy. It's about being fit. That's the goal, right? Okay. So, last round of pull-ups is the close grip pull-up. We've seen it all before. Thumb to thumb like this, okay? That's how you do it. I want your thumbs to touch. That's how you know your grips are kind of at the right. This is almost too close. This is too far. Kind of line up your thumbs. Unless one is shorter than the other, then figure it out. Um, but uh, <laughs> that happens. Anyway, and we're going to do what we do, right? Pull up assist if you need it. Kick off your ottoman, your box, your chair, whatever you got. If you don't, go to town, go to failure. Remember, these are, um, these are two rounds of each of these. So what we just did for each one is two rounds. I will demonstrate. Here we go. Get in and get it. One, close grip. And bring it. try to bring your chest to the bar, okay? Unless you're super fit, and I'm not. You won't get it all the way up there, but you'll get it close. All right? Six. Seven. Squeeze. Eight. Nine. Breathe through it. Ten. Nine. Twelve. 13, I could do a little more maybe, but I'm gonna stop right there because I don't wanna gyrate and hurt myself. Uh, gyrate, <laughs> that's what she said. But anyway, um, now we're gonna go on to, we did the close grip pull up, now we're on to the upper back, the upper pull. Working all these muscles back in here, okay? A little bit of trap too. And when I give you guys a supplemental trap workout, which I'm gonna put up on the channel soon, that'll be something you can incorporate once or even twice a week just to round out those traps because they look good when you're wearing t-shirts. You know, it's probably more for, you know, the guys out there, I don't know if you want big neck muscles, but maybe you do, maybe you do. And if you do, you know, I don't like them too big, but just enough so when you're wearing a t-shirt and stuff, it kind of looks cool. It's all about symmetry. Anyway, okay, we're into our upper back bent over pull. 
This is not a single arm. We do these double arm. Uh, <clears throat> I will demonstrate now. So again, arch that back, right? You're gonna bring them like this. This is, this is sort of the movement here. Keep your elbows not flared forward, not flared back, sort of right here, okay? And you're gonna bring like this. And you're gonna squeeze, squeeze the back. Again, hands out of it, okay? This is that movement right there. See, squeeze, squeeze, okay? And even believe it or not, if you do that right, you'll actually get a burn out of that, just doing that. So when you add weight to it, if you do it effectively, you don't need a lot of weight. And you go to failure every time, it will work, I promise you. Okay, here we go. Upper back, double arm, bent over, pull. Here we go. And I like to strip out on these, so you grab a heavier weight at first, and then you rep out with lighter weight. I will demonstrate. Here we, here we go. Here we go. One, two. Try to keep that chin out, not up, not down, just kind of out. <clears throat> Breathe. Squeeze the ass. Next. Pull it. Take the energy out of the hands. Squeeze with that back. Ah, see that? Now I was on eight. That's heavy. So I failed. I could have lunged up another one. That's when you get injuries. So what I want to do is flip over to the other side. And I went from a 35 to a 20. So if you think about that kind of ratio, if you're using a 25, drop down to a 10, maybe a 15, whatever you got to do. And then we rep out. These will be easier. Obviously, we go as fast as we can. One, two, three. Keep them wide. Don't bring them together. Don't bring them all the way out. Shoulder width. Three, four, five, six. Ah, that's it. Okay. And I got seven on that one. And it's burning. You know that machine at the gym where you put your legs up? We've all seen it, right? You put your legs up. It's the row machine, okay? That's essentially what we're doing here. But we're doing a bent over because we're at home. And we don't know those fancy, you know, gym type equipment things at our houses. At least most of us don't. Some people out there do that are doing these videos, but not me. We're just using good old fashioned weight up in the workout loft on carpet, but it's effective. If you are consistent, you train hard, it's effective. Anyway, that's what we do. So drop set, uh, double arm, bent over, upper back pull, okay? Not so much the name, as long as you remember how we did it, that's the most important. And you're gonna do two rounds. So you go from your close grip pull up into your upper back bent over pull, drop set, two rounds, to failure, fail, fail, fail every time. Go get it. Everybody hanging in there? Guess what, I got good news for you. Pull-ups, done. So we're done with our pull-ups. We're not going back, we're not looking back, all right? We are on to uh, exercise four, okay? Two rounds, okay? This is um, what I like to call the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the double arm Thor hammer drop, okay? <laughs> <laughs> little inside joke there, but uh, that person will know why I just said that. Anyway, um, these are, again, working on that horizontal back, okay? That horizontal, a little, little bit of that horizontal back, okay? So you round it out, okay? This also helps so much with posture. You know how we're standing? You see these people that stand like this? Terrible, right? You want to stand like this. This is how you want to stand. Not crazy, but like this. This exercise right here, the Thor hammer drop, will help so much. I'm going to demonstrate right now, as uh, you know, Thor would probably say. Here we go, we're gonna pick up the weight and we're going to uh, pull it and we're gonna just keep pulling it because that's, uh, that's what she said. Anyway, um, <laughs> Loki knows what I'm talking about. All right, that's a shout out to Chris. Great physique. All right, um, this is the Thor hammer drop. What we're gonna do is grab the heaviest weight that you got, okay, because it's a double arm movement. We're using a pretty big muscle in the back here. We're gonna grab it as such, we're gonna bend over, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go as low as you would for like the rows. This is sort of like an intermediate bent over, like this, okay? Legs wide, all right, butt out, squeeze the core to protect all these lower back muscles. Don't wanna pull any discs, anybody. Don't wanna get injured. Pick up your weight like this, okay? I like picking it up on either side like this. If it's round, you can also do it that way, so it does work, okay? If you're wearing workout gloves, probably get a little better grip. Um, whatever you wanna do. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna go to failure. But you're gonna squeeze, and the movement is, you're gonna pick it up, right? And again, hands are almost out of it. Again, they're cradling that weight. And that's really going to be up to you to feel the tension leaving your hands and going into the muscles, okay, that you're working. This movement is like this. We're going to go up and squeeze. Again, squeeze. It's all middle back. All this stuff. You're protecting that vertebrae, right? Keeping it safe. Uh, avoiding injury as we get older. And we do normal things in life that can lead to injuries, like just picking up something or twisting a cap off or doing what we do. Anyway, dog. Taking a dog for a walk. All of a sudden, it sees a chicken running down the street. I don't know why I would. Maybe you live in a town with a lot of chickens. It starts running, and you're like, ah! 
that movement right there, oh, you are, you know what, for weeks, if you don't have a strong, you know, back that's able to support all those little muscle groups and protect your vertebrae. Okay, so the movement is up, squeeze, down, squeeze. It's a double movement. We're going into that and the single arm vertical pulls, and I'll show you how that works, okay? Again, heavy as weight as you can on this one, all right, and as heavy a weight as you can on the other ones. So go as heavy as you got, whatever weight works for you to failure. Two rounds, here we go. The Thor have a pull. All right, everybody, get ready. <clears throat> and breathe through it. One, now you wanna bring it low. Bring it to the middle of the abs. I don't want it up here at the chest. I don't want it down in the nether regions. <laughs> Just right to the abs. Uh, squeeze, look at that. Squeeze, and this one is squeeze. This is squeeze, so I want this to go fairly slow. Squeeze, maybe do a two count. One, two, breathe. One, two, breathe. One, two, breathe. Okay, to failure, that was 10, I think. Don't rewind the video and say, no it wasn't, it was eight, you don't know what you're doing. It doesn't matter whether it was eight, 10, 12, 25. I didn't feel like I could do any more effectively, so I stopped, okay? Now we're jumping over into the single arm lateral pulls, okay? This is a kind of a rep out as well, but I want you to go heavy, um, as heavy as you can, okay, without hurting yourself. Single arm, and there's a rhythm to this, so it's a pull, 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 okay? Fast twitch muscles, but with a heavier weight, because we're mixing it up, we're shocking the muscles, they're like, what the hell's going on, man? Anyway, uh, here we go. Okay, so out of that, you hopefully won't be talking your ass off like I am, you'll be jumping right from your hammer pulls, into these, here we go, ready? And you're gonna go like this, as such. One, two, head down, three, but not like this, and not up, just down. Look to the floor, five, six, right? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, bang, okay? I could've done more, maybe, but I felt like that was good. So, Thor hammer pulls into Bent over lateral pulls, alternating arms. Back to back to failure. Get it. All right, everybody, we're, we're, we're almost there. Almost there, this is a tough workout, back is tough. Because even though it's like one, you know, sort of exercise or so you think there's seven of these, it's actually like closer to 14 because we're doubling up on each of these, okay? It's that vertical and horizontal because there's a lot of back, a lot of back to work with, okay? And we're going back to back. It's a drinking game. We'll play it later. <laughs> Every time you say back, you take a shot. Um, that's a whole different kind of workout. But this one is, uh, we're going into, uh, again, sort of a double up movement. We're sticking with the upper back. I wanna go a little bit lighter weight now uh, for uh, round five. And then round six and seven are just a finishing round and we're gonna get to that too, super easy. But um, it won't feel easy though, because that's the goal. Easy to execute, but actually is extremely effective. This one is, uh, again, sticking with that upper back spreading those back muscles out, maybe going into a little rear shoulder because that's kind of ties into the back and the upper part of it, it's all trapped and you get that rear delt. Anyway, these sort of work those as well, um, but uh, it's essentially upper middle back. I'm gonna demonstrate as such, it's a upward pull, which we've done, but we're gonna do it with lighter weight and then we're gonna go into a, into a back fly, I like to call it, okay? Now, if you did these with lighter weight and the grip was like this, it would actually work more rear delt, but if you hold the grip like this and you take it out of the shoulder and you pull with the back, it actually works a little more of the upper outer back, okay? So up, out, up, out, double movement. Again, take the energy out of your hands, let it just cradle the weight, put all the energy into the muscle. If you imagine, you visualize the muscles pulling, I'm telling you the effectiveness will be through the roof. You will not believe how many fewer reps you do and how much more effective they will be, okay? Everybody can throw around, oh, 12 to 15, do 12 to 15. Why do we do that? Why do we say 12 to 15? For who? Well, maybe the person working out or the person training you, but that doesn't mean anything. That's 12 to 15 for them. For us, I don't know, you know, this person over here might be able to do 30 and this person might be able to do 10. They're equally gonna be as effective if they go to failure. So that's why I don't put numbers on it. Why would we put a limit or a, or a bottom or a top on any of that? Just go to failure. That's how you know you're working the way your muscle attaches to its most effective spot, okay? Anyway, up and out. So, bend, bend over, arch a little bit, chin sort of up, not out, not down, just up, okay? Pick a nice spot, maybe on the wall or whatever, whatever you're looking at. 
your animal, they're sitting there watching you. That happens a lot. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and then you go up and you go out, up, out, up, squeeze, up, and get through these with speed. All right, this is five. Mm. Try to get to eight if you can, but just go to failure. That's what I always try to do. Failure, failure. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Uh. Mm, one more for me. Mm, one more round. Mm, mm, okay. That burns. You should feel that. It'll start in the upper. And you may even get it into the little lower back. Like middle, lower back. As the muscle starts to fatigue, you start to use part of these muscles again in the middle back as well. Super effective. So, I like to call it the up and out double back pull. Okay? Again, failure. Use a moderately heavy weight, okay? I wouldn't go super light, um, but for me, I'm using a 20 pound dumbbell. That's a moderate weight for me. I could probably drop down to 15 and get a lot more, but I wanna keep it slightly heavy for the round five. Because our finisher, which is a round six and seven, but it's basically, I want you to do four sets of them, and uh, we're gonna keep the interval short. This is a little bit of a switch up to the back. We haven't done this before, but um, it's super effective. So stand by, round six and seven, which are actually a very similar exercise. All right, get it. Round five, everybody. Two sets to failure. God bless. How we feeling? We doing it? We're almost there. All right, look, we got round six and seven, but essentially, we're gonna try something new. Okay, round six and seven. It's the exact same exercise, but I want you to do four sets of these. All right, these are four set finishers, okay? To round out the back. We're gonna do intervals. So when you're done with this set, literally, put your timer on, count to 30, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. If you want to say Mississippi a little slower to give yourself a little extra time, you can do one Mississippi. Uh, whatever you need to do, 30 seconds in between, okay? I'm gonna show you what these are. These are essentially a bent over row, double arm bent over row, okay? And um, uh, the only time that I'm ever gonna put a number on things, like when we were doing biceps and we did that old classic 21, right? We're gonna do 21. If you can do more, do it, but I want you to to get to 21. So use whatever weight you need to do. Um, I'm using a 15, which is light, but you may use 10, five, maybe you're stronger than me. It's very possible, a lot of people are. So you can go up to 25, 30, whatever works for you. But we're gonna do 21 at least, okay? Um, I like to break it up into seven each. Um, and essentially the movement's going to be, and I'll demonstrate without the weight, we're gonna go double arm, all double arm. We're, we're gonna go um, seven of these, and over row, right? Wing out a little bit, seven of these, and then upper back, seven of these, okay? Right, so one, two, three moves, okay? Right, bent over, wing out a little bit, upper. Don't flare out. All those things we've already done, we're incorporating them into uh, one last move, okay? Uh, called the 21 back finisher, okay? You like that? That's just copywritten, so don't go using that, even though it just rolls off the tongue, it really doesn't. Um, and the key is 30 seconds in between each of these, round six and seven, exact same exercise. I want you to do four back to back to back to back sets to finish up. 30 seconds in between, burn them out, okay? 21s, I'm gonna demonstrate now. Here we go, and this is it, we're done, back, which is a pain in the ass, but we did it, we made it, okay. Here we, here we go, and speed is our friend, okay? Not out of control speed, controlled speed, okay? Here we, here we go, form is everything, squeeze, arch, Keep your head up, chin out, not up, not down, out. Here we, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Elbows slightly out. One, two, all different parts of the back. Four, five, six, seven. Upper, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, could I have done maybe eight? Maybe nine, yes, but do me a favor, start with 21s initially. If you can go to 30, which means 10, 10, and 10, do it. Um, but with this one, it's about speed. So right now, it's already been 15 seconds, another 15, I'm gonna go right back in, okay? So we count down, and I'm telling you, by the time you get to that, that last round, okay, that, that last 21, you know, when you're 60 something into this thing, you'll be glad that you, for at least the first couple workouts, stuck to that sort of seven to eight range for each of these exercises, all right? So now we're right back in, see? And I'll demonstrate one last time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty
four, five, six, seven, out, one, two. Pull it with the back, right? Not the hands. Energy out of the hands. Totally out of the hands. Squeeze back. Let the back pull up the muscle. Back pull up the muscle. Over, upper. One, two, right? Five, six, seven. And what I want to do is I want to eliminate all this. I want to eliminate injury. That's why. Work out smart. Train hard, but smart. Okay? That's your finisher. 30 second intervals. Okay? Keep it. Four sets back to back to back to back to back. That's round six and seven. That's our back workout. All right? More abs coming. A little cardio blast coming. Some trap supplements. Some calf supplements. Not pill supplements. Supplemental workouts. We don't do pills here. No pills. No fancy stuff. Just hardcore training. Smart eating. And uh, consistency. And you'll see the results. God bless everybody. Back. Go get it.